former Trump State Department spokeswoman Morgan Ortegas is officially running for Congress. She threw her hat into a crowded race for Tennessee's 5th Congressional District this morning. But unlike other candidates, she's got the backing of her former boss. Joining us now in her first TV interview on Newsmax is Republican congressional candidate Morgan Ortegas. Morgan, good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. I'm still getting used to hearing that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Well, it's pretty cool. So tell me, did you miss Washington? I mean, what's going on? Why did you want to run for Congress? <laughs> no, just the opposite. I think Washington got even more broken, if that's possible, uh, since I left. Uh, listen, I love Tennessee. Uh, we love living here. We're raising our daughter here. Uh, Tennessee is so important because it's just a place where people have conservative values, where people are kind, uh, where people believe in this novel little thing in the Constitution called freedom of speech. Um, and I am just so excited uh, to have the backing and endorsement of President Trump. I think, uh, you know, as you and Mercy, you guys are experienced in campaigns. As you know, this is something that every Republican candidate in the country uh, looks for. And so for President Trump to put his faith and, and trust uh, in me to give me this endorsement uh, is just incredibly excited. I'm honored. I'm grateful. And I'm going to do him proud. As you know, there's been coverage about um, there being there's being blowback in the MAGA world about President Trump's endorsement. There was a political story on this. How do you respond to that? Well, I think from the pictures that I can see that you're showing here, it shows that I'm as MAGA as you can get. Uh, I worked with you, Mercy, uh, in the trenches in the Trump administration for years. Um, and I think what people often don't see when they saw you and I, Mercy, you know, in public roles, uh, talking about the president and our policies, what they didn't see is the hours and days of work that we put in behind the scenes to make sure that America First policies were being enacted. You know, my job as Trump spokesperson at the State Department was to be the face to the world of what America First foreign policy went, uh, what, what that meant. And guess what? Uh, I think that we proved that we had the best foreign policy of any Republican president since Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan said that you have to have peace through strength. And that's something that Donald Trump uh, just had in spades. And unfortunately, President Biden is incredibly weak, which is why we're seeing the chaos that we see on the world stage today. Morgan, speaking of your last job, um, the person who succeeded you, Ned Price, at the State Department, got grilled for claiming that Russia may be preparing to fabricate a pretext for invasion, his words, of Ukraine by creating a video portraying a fake Ukrainian attack. He said that it was predicated on intelligence. I want to play you the exchange from the State Department, the podium that you used to brief from. What is the evidence that they, I mean, this is like crisis actors, really? This is like Alex Jones territory you're getting into now. Um, what evidence do you have to support the idea that there is some propaganda film in the, in, in the making? Matt, this is derived uh, from information known to the U.S. government, intelligence information that we have declassified. I think you well, know. Okay, well, where, where is it? Where, where is this information? It is intelligence information that we have declassified. Well, where is it? Where is the declassified information? I just delivered it. No, no you made a series of allegations. He literally goes on to say, I could print off what I just said as if that matters. Now, Morgan, aside from being at the State Department, you are a military intelligence officer. How... how yeah. I mean, how would you have handled that different? I just cannot believe he's saying, I have intelligence. I just told you. I, I cannot believe that this is how they think they can do business. You're right, Sean. I mean, listen, you and I know that briefing uh, anytime you're in front of the media is difficult and you have to be prepared for tough questions, especially Matt Lee from the AP. He was in my bullpen. He covered me. And it was, uh, you know, it was a fight every day because he's a strong and intrepid reporter and he's asking the tough questions that need to be asked. And I think that these are the tough questions that the American people want to know the answers to as well, especially after Afghanistan. You know, President Biden has continually told the American people, oh, no one told me that Kabul would fall so quickly. No one said it could be a matter of weeks. Uh, so I think that journalists and the American people have every right to question uh, this administration and to hold them accountable for what they're telling us, because quite frankly, their, their track record on foreign policy uh, execution has not been, um, you know, as, as perfect as it should be by any means. Right. Well, President Biden earlier today did a joint press conference with the German chancellor amid tensions over Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Watch how he threatened Putin. 
if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But how will you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. He couldn't even answer how he'd enforce this, Morgan. What is Putin thinking right now? Uh, well, listen, I'm not in his mind, but I could tell you that he, uh, I've, I've met with him with Mike Pompeo uh, when he was Secretary of State from President Trump, um, and he knows a strong man when he sees him, and he knows a weak man when he sees him. Uh, and I think, listen, as it relates to Germany, I mean, that the journalist who asked that question had it right. I mean, we green-lighted, uh, we as in the Biden administration, they green-lighted uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline whenever we in the Trump administration put sanctions on that heavily to make sure that that didn't happen. You can only help people as much as they want to help themselves. And so when Germany has made the decision, which I think is costly, to make themselves energy dependent uh, on the Russians, I mean, why is it a surprise then that that Putin thinks that he could get away with these actions. Listen, I don't think there's anybody credible that thinks that we should be sending American troops to fight for Ukraine. That's not uh, what this discussion should be about. In, in my mind, we should reframe the discussion and say, you know, wh you're talking so tough now. Why weren't you doing that a year ago? And also remember that this is the same administration. I'm old enough to remember, and, and Sean, you'll remember right. this as a military officer as well. I'm old enough to remember Syria red lines. Uh, and when those were costs, oh, I'm old enough yeah. to remember the threats about Russia invading Crimea that happened in the Obama administration. Right. Um, and I don't recall seeing all of these things happen in the Trump administration. It's very simple. These yeah. dictators knew that they wouldn't be able to get away with it. What a concept. Peace through strength. Thanks, Morgan. Good luck on your race. Thank you.